Hello and welcome to this video about the square roots of matrices. In this video we'll describe a method for finding the square roots of a matrix without needing any eigenvectors. We will need the characteristic polynomial and eigenvalues which can be found fairly easily. I've published some videos that describe how to find these things. So what we want to find is the square root of the matrix A and X is its square root. Here is the equation that most generally describes this. This equation may be manipulated to be in this form so that the main square root is to be found but this method can find more than one square root. We'll define this function to be the characteristic polynomial of the matrix A the a is subscripted to this function and x is its free variable. This is the characteristic polynomial of the matrix A written out in polynomial notation. We'll define this function to be a list of all of the eigenvalues of A which are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of A. So this is what this list looks like. It has the curly brackets used in sets but it isn't a set because some of the eigenvalues can appear twice. It isn't a vector either because the order isn't important. These are the eigenvalues of the matrix X which is the square root of A. All of the eigenvalues in this list are the square roots of the eigenvalues of A which we'd find in a diagonal matrix. Now after having rewritten this equation at the top of the screen we have to reconstruct the characteristic polynomial of the matrix X from these eigenvalues. We'll do this by creating this product of all these degree 1 polynomials so that these eigenvalues are the roots of this characteristic polynomial. If an eigenvalue appears twice in the list then it appears twice in this product. So after having multiplied these degree 1 polynomials together we get this polynomial with these coefficients. The Cayley-Hamiltonian theorem states that if we substitute a matrix into its own characteristic polynomial then we'll get zero. So we'll use this theorem to write out this matrix equation. The constant term is multiplied by the identity matrix so that it may be added onto these matrices. We'll add more terms in this equation so that we can more easily follow what we'll be doing next. I'll just rewrite this equation at the top of the screen here. We'll gather all of the x squared terms together like this. We'll assume that n is an even number for the moment. This equation may be adapted for an odd value of n. I'll colour them in red so as to more easily follow them. We'll substitute a in for x squared giving us this equation. After colouring all of the x terms blue we'll gather all of the terms containing x to one side. Then we'll factorise this term having x outside the brackets. We'll subtract this term from both sides. Then we'll multiply both sides by this matrix inverse. So now we have a formula to find the square root of a matrix that's very simple and doesn't require any eigenvectors. So now for an example of how to calculate the square root of a matrix using this method. We'll start off with this 2 by 2 matrix. We'll set A to be the square of this matrix so when we try to find the square root of A we'll get B back again. This is the characteristic polynomial of the matrix A which is very easy to find using a method that I described in another video. And after solving this polynomial we get these eigenvalues of the matrix A. We'll find the square roots of all these eigenvalues so that now we have the possibility of two different eigenvalues 5 and minus 5 for the square root of matrix A. Then we'll start off with the primary or positive square root. 
This should give us the matrix B for the square root of A. And then we'll construct the characteristic polynomial for the square root of A from the eigenvalues. This is the final simplified polynomial. Earlier on in this video, we used the degree 3 polynomial to represent this characteristic polynomial. So this is what it would look like as a degree 3 polynomial. And these are the corresponding coefficients of this polynomial. We'll set x to be the square root of the matrix A. So according to the theorem about these polynomials, the characteristic polynomial of a matrix should be 0 when this polynomial is evaluated for its own matrix. We can substitute A in for x squared here. This equation can be solved for x, and it looks like a very simple equation to solve. I'll just clean this page up a bit and move a lot of equations over to this side. We can now quickly evaluate this equation to be this. We can substitute the matrix A into it. We can partly evaluate it using scalar multiplication. Evaluating this matrix gives us this matrix as the square root, which is equal to the matrix B. We can then try the other eigenvalue minus 5 which we can use to find the next characteristic polynomial. And here is the characteristic polynomial constructed from these eigenvalues. We can substitute x into this equation and a in for x squared, like before. We then end up with this equation. Substituting a into this equation gives us this equation, which simplifies to give us this matrix which is equal to the negative of b, which is also a square root of a. Now for this second example, we'll start off with this 3 by 3 matrix. We'll find the square of it and set it equal to a. So this is what the square of the first matrix is. So we know that it has at least one real square root. We'll work backwards to find the square root of this matrix. This is the characteristic polynomial of this matrix A, found using a method that I described on my video about them. So we'll set x to be the square root of A, and we'll try to find the matrix x. These are the eigenvalues of A, which are the roots of the characteristic polynomial of A. These are the eigenvalues of the matrix x which are obtained by finding all of the square roots of the eigenvalues of A. There are two possible square roots for each number, so there are multiple square roots. It looks here like there'd be six possibilities for x. So we'll start off with the case where all of the square roots are positive, which is the first case. We can reconstruct the characteristic polynomial of x, from these eigenvalues by multiplying these expressions together like this. And so we get this as the characteristic polynomial of x. These are the coefficients of this polynomial which I'll use to substitute back into the formula for the square root. So if we substitute the matrix x into its own characteristic polynomial, it will be equal to zero by the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. We can substitute a in for x squared in this polynomial. Then we can gather all terms that contain an x together and all terms that don't contain x together like this. We can then quickly manipulate this equation to give us x in terms of a and in terms of the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial. And after substituting these values in, we get x being equal to this matrix, which is found to be a square root of a. I did test it by squaring it. So then we can try to find the next square root, which has some negative eigenvalues. We should get another square root of a. We'll reconstruct the characteristic polynomial of x by doing this. So this is the characteristic polynomial of x. I wrote down 0 as being a coefficient to keep track of this term. 
These are the coefficients of this polynomial, in case you want to plug it directly into the formula. We'll substitute the matrix X into this polynomial, the answer being equal to 0. Then we'll substitute A in for X squared and simplify this equation. We'll then factor out the X. Then we'll solve this equation for X. Then substituting A into this equation gives us this matrix, which is another square root of A. We can then find the square root of A for these eigenvalues. Then for these eigenvalues, notice that they are the negatives of the previous square roots. And finally we can try to find X corresponding to these eigenvalues. Unfortunately, I couldn't use this method to find these square roots, because the square roots of equal eigenvalues must have the same sign, otherwise we run into problems with the solution. In this case, we had an expression for the inverse of a non-invertible matrix. The matrix that was the square root of A with these eigenvalues did exist, and is equal to matrix B that we started with. I hope that someone could invent a method to find this square root of a matrix. This method of finding square roots of matrices by reconstructing the characteristic polynomial may be adapted to find the cube roots and logarithms of matrices, although not as smoothly. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video and have learned something from it. Please click like and subscribe if you liked it and felt it was helpful. Please leave all of your ideas, thoughts and criticisms in the comments. And thank you for watching.